is anyone else just genuinely feeling tired just kind of over the bullshit of this imbalance that's happening in the world like I'm just fully over it those who like are putting in work anyway like clearly there's been some heavy energetic block just there and I'm genuinely over it and tired I'm tired but anyway what I'm seeing for this cycle is that we're truly going to be going after our passions like maybe it has to reach this point of feeling like so fed up that we just go harder in our passions but I'm seeing our passions are strongly activating and we're like heading full blast into them this could be this energetic shift I don't know but we'll see we will see but welcome everyone my name is Kalita Salia and this is our sky our story so over here we use the actual visible sky to interpret our astrology because I see it all as technology and because this is nature it's actually happening in the sky these are the general energies that I see associate with us a little bit more so I am a mother I'm a real angel and I also dabble in crypto so do make sure you check out my crypto angles podcast where I combine astrology with the crypto market together okay so do check that out and if you cannot see (laughs) the physical copy of the calendar will be available in december okay it's absolutely beautiful we've gone better we've gone harder we've gone bigger so do um Keep an eye out for the physical copy if you'd like that. The digital copy is available now um, if you'd like the digital. So, um, yes, this this is it, basically. It's just so much better quality. Um, it's much better quality than this one. <laughs> but, you know, we grow, don't we? we? We grow. So that is there. But anyway... Without further ado, I do offer birth chart readings that is in alignment with the visible sky. So if you'd like to grab that, do get at me. Um, The price is £20 and it's £25 for an extended version where we look into your inner child as well, as well as your birth illumination card and a little bit of numerology. So um, do grab that before this year is done because in January it will go up to 25 for the standard reading and 30 pounds for the extended reading because I go in depth and I look at every detail okay but without further ado for those who are new anyway we usually go over the if it's the beginning of the month we go we touch on the numerology so we'll be doing that in next in the next video as December is fast approaching but not today though we'll be looking at the transits then we'll be moving on to the moon transits and then we'll um clarify with tarot to see if i'm just gassing or you know and then we come back to the present moment because the present moment is all that matters right we go from uh, the day of the sun to saturn's day okay sunday to saturday let's get november up we go from Sunday to Saturday. And so as you can see, this is the cycle we are covering. This cycle, basically. So, let me just move these out the way. You can feature again in a little bit. Do forgive me for my mood. I just feel depleted, to be honest. I feel so depleted. So anyway, these are all my socials. TikTok just has an 8 at the end. Find me there. These are the positions of the luminaries. The ones with the R are currently retrograding. This is the child luminary, as I says. I cover that in the extended birth chart reading and we go over it in hours. 444 on the timer, as I said that. Um, Your passions are moving strongly from this cycle. But what's happening anyway? So we're getting to the transits of this cycle so 
the first thing that's happening and you probably saw that on the calendar forgive me if i'm a little bit slow but our lily is moving from virgo into libra yeah that's lily and then we have on the 24th and 25th we have the sun going into scorpio now scorpio season begins people we were not in scorpio season um as well as what's the other one two luminaries are moving into scorpio mars and the sun so what is this telling me anyway what is this telling me sorry i want this there i can't like yeah there we go <laughs> anyway what it what is this telling me so we've got lilith Lilith represents it's a lot of passion coming in here this is why it says passions are moving strongly Lilith represents what we are passionate about yet we are suppressed in that area there's some suppression happening there so if you don't know the story Lilith was Adam's first wife and then um she basically says fuck this grew her wings and flew away obviously google a more in-depth story if you want to know more of the story but that's basically the gist of it she um was passionate about something about existing how she had liked to exist but she was suppressed by yaldabaoth or the lord or Kronos or whatever you want to fucking call him anyway um so it's about what we're passionate about Scorpio is heavy on what we're passionate about so we'll get more into that obviously after Lilith but anyway it's moving into Libra so what I'm seeing here is that we are going to our passions are going to definitely be um towards this Libra balancing energy we're gonna have that passion there but I'm also seeing there may be external noise trying to suppress us in this area so this can literally come from people um family friends work colleagues circumstances basically all kind of just throwing in that like little suppression around how you would like to bring balance from the idea you've got into your head and how you would like to bring it out into the plane of existence because i always say that libra is an amazing manifester like they say it's the, it's linked to the seventh house so it is a lot to do with relationships um, all types of relationships and having balance within that but that's also balance with yourself as well your relationship with yourself it's the balance with your um, work home relationship and all of that type of stuff okay so that's Libra so ideally even if it's about relationships you have um, it's the idea that you've got in your head hope or not I need to get another mic uh, and how you bring that out and it's weighed on the scales just like yeah <laughs> beautiful drawing but um that's libra essentially it's the idea that you've got in your head about relationships it's the idea you've got in your head about yourself um your relationship to many things and how you're going to create that balance because you've got the idea in your head so what is coming up for me as we've got right now this is moving this is moving on in the on 19th as you can see down here it's moving on the 19th that's when it enters uh, libra so in essence it's the beginning of the cycle so in essence before um like mars and the sun moves we're getting like a blend of that energy with the libra energy okay because we've got the sun mars and child in libra so obviously the sun and mars will be moving but our inner child is still in libra so pay attention thoroughly to how um your passions how kind of that flame is in you would i say 
on creating balance that could be with people that could be it could be any type of balance you're trying to create everyone's life is different and if you go as deep to look into your own um charts you'd just pay attention to where Lilith is in your own chart and then you just put that next to the Libra energies basically so I can only touch on mine my Lilith is in Sagittarius so there's just though I've got this passion about this higher perspective these higher learnings I've got this passion about even travel there's naturally um just suppression there which I have to push through I always say if there is suppression there that really is a signal to say okay I'm on the right track the hologram is just hologramming and it's just creating illusions making me feel like I'm suppressed but ultimately I am not so if you do feel suppressed naturally as these energies come in use it as your signal that you are on the right path and just stick to your passion okay just stick to it so obviously because my Lilith is in Sagittarius then it's like ultimately I'll be working on creating the balance of what the idea in, in my head that that I do have about travel you girls trying to travel you know I'm ready to travel I'm ready to just go places and I, I generally feel I've been suppressed in that area seeing so many people just going on whatever holiday da 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 and I've not really had that, you know, I've been some places, but there's always been that suppression, even if I've gone and travelled, I'm suppressed in another country, <laughs> you know, I've not been anywhere since 2017 when I was pregnant with my son, and it's just long overdue, so I see it's just for me anyway, it's just creating balance around that. <laughs> following my passions to know how am I actually going to do this continually not just oh I can I save up one time and don't know I'm ready to travel when I choose to travel I don't understand any of this I can't go what what's that it don't make no sense to me don't make one drop of sense so um yes and of course because it's just about like relationships too um yeah because it is about relationships it's just having that balance so think of where your Lilith is if you'd like to apply this to yourself I don't often say like oh how to apply it to yourself I kind of just generalize it but I'm feeling called to say it this time um but pay attention to where your Lilith is as I said if you would like a birth chart reading I can do that but ultimately you can check yourself like it's not that deep <laughs> um it's not that deep so because yeah as much like I'm not gonna lie as much as I love to give readings and I find it a privilege to look at people on a deeper level ultimately you don't need it like you can have it especially if you find it difficult to trust yourself but because I see this as all technology and it runs on autopilot the most you need to do is trust yourself um but you know I had courage even more courage like looking into my own chart so the choice is yours the option is there never invest in anything you don't feel called to do but if you do then I'm here if you'd like so anyway that's what I'm seeing for Lilith we may naturally feel our passions even more as I said they're moving in quick and as we get further into it the passions are only going to get stronger but we may feel our passion more but the hologram will make noise the hologram will create illusions to try and keep you suppressed and if that comes up for you know remember that that is your sign that is your signal you are on the right path and to continue what you are passionate about okay the idea you've got in your head bring it out that idea so my idea about higher learning as mine is in Sag, my idea about travel, it's about working on that passion to cultivate it. So do take note, obviously, of where your Lilith is and apply it to that. But moving on to the sun technology now, moving into Scorpio as well as Mars. So what is that telling me? And then we we'll get on to the moon transits. So the sun represents our ego. It's how we naturally shine and ultimately excuse me confirmation burp it is the 
it's the lens which we operate through okay so your actual sun sign you're always generally going to operate through that lens but it's like two lenses as the sun transits around the zodiac wheel and spirals on up okay so for example my sun is an aries according to the sky but in mainstream astrology i would have been a taurus <laughs> so this is why we we look at the sky here and mainstream astrology is inaccurate purposefully to just energetically knock you off but that's another story there's videos down below which explains like why i choose the sky it just makes more logical sense because this is where astrology is happening however um as the sun obviously goes around you still see the you still interact with your reality through your sun lens which is your ego the ego is necessary without the ego we wouldn't um we couldn't really interact that's how we have our lens and our perspective of what we're doing okay and then as it's going into scorpio it's the mix of obviously what your natural sun sign is with these scorpionic energies so um scorpio is fueled by scorpio's fueled by let me write this down it's fueled by pluto so we've got pluto qualities in here as well as mars okay as well as mars and i i have to show you if you don't mind if you don't mind this is included in the calendar so we have scorpio it's fueled by pluto and mars and it's a water sign so it's all there you can literally learn all of this learn the energies with the calendar um however it's fueled by pluto and mars so what is this telling me Pluto, there's death and rebirth qualities there. Pluto's only desire is to like, what do you want? Okay, you want that. I'm going to bring experiences to you to allow you to transform through that experience so you're closer to that version you see yourself being. That's all Pluto cares about, okay? It doesn't, doesn't give a fuck about anything else. Mars is it's the flame it's that fire it's literally your drive and passion so this is why scorpio placements they can be very passionate in nature um very deep in nature as well just generally transformative so um yeah just transformative it's like in their depths you can see their passion <laughs> their true drive and their passion of a scorpio so what I'd like you to pay attention to is we did have a no moon, new moon in Libra, as you can see here down on the calendar. It was in Libra. Mainstream astrology was saying Scorpio. However, the moon entered Scorpio on the 14th, kind of like the end of the 14th, the moon entered Scorpio anyway. So it was still full in the new moon energies. Um... So I'd like you to just go back and pay attention to how your feelings and emotions were moving you um, on Tuesday. What happened on Tuesday into Wednesday? How were you feeling? What actions did you, did your emotions, did your energy cause you to take? Because what I'm kind of seeing is how our emotions moved us on Tuesday and Wednesday when it comes to the sun and mars going into scorpio now it's that that is coming up for you like i again i felt just a little bit fed up i was just like nah i have to make something work and blah 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 um and yeah so basically i'm seeing now the sun being that magnetism it's what draws experiences to you so the moon causes the emotion and the energy to act upon something and then um as you as you act upon your energy you act upon it and then this draws experiences to you the sun the sun draws the experience to you which then allows you to operate and see that experience through that lens okay that's how the technologies work so um the experiences that will naturally be drawn to you and it's not long in scorpio it doesn't stay in scorpio for long 
Okay, so as you can see, it enters on the 24th and on the 30th of November, it goes into Ephesians. So again, I find this interesting how it's quite a deep and transformative sign. So it's kind of like this quick burst of <laughs> let's get shit done basically so um you're truly going to your vulnerability and this really is a strength and it's like in that strength people are seeing you are noticing your drives your passions um and how you can literally transform so ultimately for these six days yeah for these six days you may draw um while it's in there bear in mind it's not in there till the end of this cycle so allow these energies to obviously come in but as we go into the next cycle the end of november basically pay attention to the experiences that come to you are they opportunities that can transform you are they opportunities that um it is about your drive and your passion um, to kind of get you going to interact with it. So it's going to be interesting. Obviously, I always say take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Just see what experiences come to you. Um, see what experiences. And then, of course, as we've got Mars in Scorpio as well, just being your drive and your passion. Mars is happy there because it fuels it as well. So it's even more amplified. OK, this passion this drive this flame within you is even more amplified at this time so um and again it's just interesting how all of this is happening especially because of there's big energetic shifts because mars isn't the type of luminary it's not like the sun it's not going to be in this position every year you know <laughs> it's not going to be in this position every year because it just moves a bit slower has retrogrades blah 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 blah. so it's not as if it's like oh next year it's going to be the same thing no it's different so i find it super interesting that all of these energies are coming in now especially because i've done a video which will be out tomorrow is the 5d portal or the 5d connection is now back online so it's back online the connection to all as one system is back online um and our drive and our passion is just all up in there so again obviously mars is in scorpio for a little longer than the sun but still not that long he moves beginning of december into ophetius so um yeah <laughs> so i will just say pay attention as well to yourself what um hold on I thought someone's at the door but it's my son just knocking but anyway um yes yeah, so do keep in mind because I find it interesting as well as as well as Venus is in Virgo we've still got these energies of paying attention to the finer details and we're experiencing that within our six senses because venus represents the six senses sight touch smell hearing taste as well as intuition so we're still in that virgo energy and we're getting our flame our passion our drive um and it's bringing in opportunities to truly transform us so pay attention to what obviously comes up and of course we've got our inner child still in Libra that will be the only Libra when these obviously all move but we're still our sun right now until it moves at the end of the cycle we're still attracting these opportunities to um create what's in your head and bringing it out into the plane of existence you're driving your passion is still operating in that until the end of the cycle um before we delve into our depths and our passions um, to trans to truly transform us so I will say what the energies that naturally come up around about the end of November um, even if it's like a whole new pla passion or it's just a reignited flame use naturally the Virgo energy before Venus comes out of Virgo so all the nitty-gritty work that you need to do use this time and <laughs> yeah just use this time okay to get it done and it's just interesting because like before like holiday season as well 
that's interesting and then keep in mind that your inner child is like it's about this balancing energy your inner child right now is screaming for balance that's what it's after so use these passions these passions that come up use the analytical paying attention to every detail virgo energy um to bring about this balance as well lilith is in there it will be in there for a bit so um yeah create your reality basically follow your passion it's there for a reason so moving on to the moon the moon transits now so we have our cetus watery dip happening <laughs> we have our cetus watery dip so on the 20th we have an aquarius moon on the 22nd we have a pisces moon on the 23rd we have our cetus and then pisces moon so it takes its dip into cetus and then on the 24th the late on the 24th so it's mainly like the 25th but if you're like behind london time then you know the moon goes into aries at the end of um Friday, the end of Friday, the moon goes into Aries and then obviously on the Saturday finishes off in Aries. So what am I seeing here with the moon? It starts off in Capricorn and that's where we ended the last video, didn't we? So the moon is the mover of our emotions. As I said, it gets our energy in motion, our energy moving. Ugh, confirmation burp, excuse me. So basically however you feel about something your emotions your intuition that gut feeling <sighs> i don't know if you can hear that tapping in the background <laughs> oh my days anyway so it gets your energy in motion it gets your emotions moving from how you feel about something um your intuition about something which then causes you to act from your emotions and then of course this act your ego then draws experiences to you so that's how the technology works so the moon um on sunday is in the energy of um oh i forgot to mention that so yeah sunday in it's in the energy of solid foundations basically long-term oriented goals um your emotions are moving you generally towards that direction in a logical way because we are still in this new moon no moon energy and the first quarter moon happens on the monday day of the moon so this is telling me that when the moon is in capricorn on sunday we will be our emotions will be moving us in a logical way how could i logically do this how could i um how like how can i reach this long-term goal capricorn energy that will set a solid foundation in the most logical way our emotions will be moving in that way and you'll generally act upon these emotions that come from a logical standpoint however <laughs> as the moon goes into aquarius on the 20th we have that shift in energy okay we have that shift in energy so do keep in mind aquarius is it's in aquarius obviously for two days so the beginning of um monday the aquarian energy it still may be very um logical based so aquarius is the 11th house is very sociable it's very giving in nature um it's very it has unique ideas entrepreneurial mind basically being the water bearer so your emotions may a, a bit on monday it may be moving you in a logical way on like again how you could socialize how you could network how you could um your business ideas it could be anything around that however it then switches into um more 
like fully illuminated based on your intuition, your gut feeling and etc, etc. Because when the moon is illuminated, it's kind of like, it's super clear. It's like, oh, this is just so clear. The logic and reason is just not really necessary because it's just super illuminated and super clear. Okay, so it's then going to go into this illumination on, I guess, how you could... Um, be in this Aquarian energies your emotions will be just like oh I really feel like doing this I really feel like working on this project or doing this at work or starting this or um, even if it's just network like socially talking to other people like oh yeah I want to I feel like talking to who and who right now that could definitely be coming up with you on the Tuesday no the Monday into the Wednesday and then after that the moon, mover of our emotions, is moving into this Cetus watery dip. That's what I like to call it. So, I've said many times before, but I'll, I'll, I'll do a little recap. When it comes to the zodiac wheel, we go, we're meant to go in a spiral. Okay? Um, but this spiral only happens when the officious, when the officious energy is involved as well as um, Cetus, really, and Pisces, you know, all three of them. But basically, the Ophetius, after you have, because Ophetius comes before, after Scorpio, Ophetius is in between Scorpio and Sag. So you have this Scorpio death, where it shows you your passion, you begin to transform, basically. And then Ophetius, as that's literally linked to magnesium on the periodic table, that transforms your energy but without Ophetius, we've been kept on a loop in mainstream astrology. We've just been kept on a loop, going around and around and around and around and around, like an NPC. But with Ophetius, you have that transformative energy. So when we go into Sagittarius now, with its its arrow, he then takes us in a new focus direction. Okay, so that's how it works. And then in that new direction... Capricorn energy comes in and lays that foundation and focusing focuses on that long-term goal after you've got that laid out the Aquarian energy comes in okay so this is the zodiac story I feel I'll do one whole video just thoroughly going through this I probably don't have to do it every video or most videos um the Aquarius energy co comes in, being the water bearer, you, you're now ready to give back because you know the long-term goal, you've set the foundation and your energy has um, transformed and put, pointed you in that direction so you're able to set that foundation. So you can then give back and like the water bearer, you're then giving back, you're giving your energy, this is how you're expending your energy and then you, you the waters kind of like dip into Pisces and Cetus which is the end being the end of the zodiac wheel your energy in motion goes through a watery birth it goes through a watery birth which is Pisces and Cetus to then be birthed again um, because this is why my calendar starts from Pisces to Pisces it starts in April with Pisces before going into Aries and then it ends in March with Pisces because before Pisces is technically like the first and the last sign as when we enter this realm we are birthed through the waters before the flame element fire Aries kicks in okay so it's like this is the zodiac wheel now so so our emotions are going through that energetic upgrade it's gone through Ophetius where it's where it's um healed and transmutated so we've stepped into a wider awareness of how our energy is moving us and we're not just like oh well I'm gonna do this anyway if you're on that vibe you're just in a loop and that's okay if you want to be in a loop be in a loop but I'm a spiral fam I'm spiraling up and out of here anyway so um Pisces anyway it's your emotions your energy in motion is taking that it's getting birthed again. <laughs> it's getting birthed. Cetus is the alchemization of your emotions. So it's like, okay, you've gone around the zodiac wheel. You've transformed it. 
we dip into Pisces, which is the water, and then it the moon dips down slightly into Cetus, dips down sl slightly into Cetus to alchemize all of how your energy has moved you over the past 28 days, so to say. Um, yeah, it's like, okay, this is how our energy has moved I've learned this how my emotions move me I've learned that and then it pops out <laughs> like a whale and then it goes into um Pisces again ready to be birthed new water represents like new life birthing etc etc we see in the movies we see in the music videos water it's all symbolic and it happens in the sky so our emotions as I've been saying from what we've experienced it's literally energetically um, being birthed again at the end of this cycle. Yeah, well, in the middle of this cycle, would I say. And then it will be ready to move in this fresh new way as we enter Aries at the end of Friday. Okay, freer day. So our emotions will be just like, okay, it's kind of like this refresh. And as I said at the beginning, if you've just been feeling like rotted, rasclart, what's happening? Like what's going on? Um, Again, it all makes sense because we need to go through this emotional upgrade for our drive and our passion and our moon, not our moon, our sun ego to begin to truly tap into um our deaths so we can transform into the version we're ready to be okay it's all about our passions now as i said with um lilith as i said with lit as i said with lilith the sun lilith being about passions the sun um being obviously in scorpio and mars in scorpio it's a lot about passion so it just it's amazing how the sky aligns to all of this and i do get blown away every day that this not every video at the synchronicity of it all um which just allows me again to just trust and as i says always just trust yourself because it runs on autopilot so if you are feeling down one day just trust that take a day off a mental health break it's okay you know but as our emotions are leveling up anyway, they're being birthed into this new expanded awareness. We're going deep after our drive and our passions, what's passionate to us um, and what will transform us closer to that version that we see in our head to create these balances, which will speak to our inner child. Okay, so trust the alchemization of things which come up on the 23rd trust what you may need to let go of because how your energy was moved you just wasn't happy with that just trust that if it needs to go it needs to go it's not about pleasing nobody at this point in time like it's really not i'm over i'm just over that you just need to keep you you good keep those who you love good and just focus on you and them like that's it um yeah and that is it so that's kind of what i'm seeing with the mover of our emotions anyway do let me know if you like the depth of this um let's clarify with some tarot i forgot this in the last video but take a deep breath with me and exhale Oh, I mean, I need these little breaks. <laughs> I need these little breaks. So we're going into the tarot. As I said, oh, let me just get comfortable. Bear with me. As I says, we let's knock that. Start the energy again. Oh, I don't want to step on the light. I have to just do this and then we'll shuffle. So as I said, there is going to be a video releasing tomorrow about the, f the 5D um, timeline opening up. So do obviously keep an eye out for that. I'm getting back into my 
sort of smaller videos but with my other content now i know i've been saying it for the whole year but now it's finally happening <laughs> now it's finally happening so not so much now that i feel i'm in flow with my two podcasts my our sky our story podcast and my crypto angles i feel i've got more energy to get back into the other videos so not that again anyway what is happening for this cycle as the moon goes through cetus and as we delve into more of our passions are we delving into more of our passions so i don't know if you notice but my board's broke you know how i could stick it on the side so everything is falling apart right now <laughs> everything but straight off the bat we've got the world we've got the world and we've got 21 so 21 equals saturn in gematria so time is heavy with this card the world i'm seeing yeah let's pull the cards let's pull them all and then we'll link it but that just flew right out can we get any more clarity i can't do i try to do it on the camera but any more clarity of this cycle as the moon our emotions transform us as our emotions transform us we've got four of cups um And we start going after our passions. Are we going after our passions this cycle? Hmm? Are we creating that balance? Oh, we had to. So, what was that like? We had five of cups reverse and eight of cups reverse. So something's telling me it may not be super fast, this cycle. It may not be super fast. Um, I'm kind of... There we go. Can we get a clarity? Any more? Any more for any more? What's happening? That was a lot. <laughs> that oh okay mm, that was a lot but i'm feeling called to just pull out three so these three came up we've got nine of pentacles at the top of the deck but we do have i'll pull it over five of cups reverse eight of wands reverse Ten of Pentacles upright, and the Fool popped out twice, and the Magician. Can you see all that? Yeah. So let's take a read. Let's take a read. We'll do the Major Arcana's last. So we'll touch on the Four of Cups first. Um. Yes. Do let me know if any of this resonates. Do let me know as well. Please like like the video. Just a simple like would help. Um. Like if you if you can't support by getting a calendar or a reading, that's completely fine. It's like just a like on the video, you know, a share. It would be truly helpful. And also if anyone has brought a calendar, um, or has had a reading, if you've not given a review, I'd highly appreciate a review too. Where are these things, man? <laughs> Where are they? Okay. We've got the eight of wands. Where are the cups? There we go. And I feel I'm not... I don't feel too well. I feel like when Scorpio energy comes in, I always kind of notice like a little illness, a little slow. So, eight of wands and then we've got the pentacles. Uh, where are the pentacles? Did I see them? No, the pentacles are at the back. Where are these motherfucking pentacles? Forgive me. I'm super lost right now. Have they just... Oh, it's right in the middle. Anyway, that's why my finger was there. So, we had the Four of 
cups oh so we've got a little self-doubt coming up potentially introspection taking things personally giving little away not seeing what's on offer lacking initiative taking time to reflect so this to me it aligns because our emotions are going through this cetus watery dip Okay, it's going through this Cetus watery dip, and as I says, our drive and our passion, um, with, with Mars. Oh, I can't even move the calendar with Mars and the Sun entering Scorpio at the end of the cycle. The beginning of the cycle may just be a little bit slower. We do have the Eight of Wands in reverse there, so I'm seeing just a little bit slow movement next cycle to be honest like potentially not much happening which is annoying but anyway um as your emotions are going through this emotional upgrade it's like we're analyzing we're alchemizing all of how our emotions have been moving us previously so this slowness this not giving a lot away because you're you're peeping into yourself basically um so you may not see what's on offer because you just focus on yourself initiative to do stuff maybe just like yeah it kind of makes sense because you're analyzing stuff before you know how to show up fresh so what I will say is that um I'm seeing slower energies with the eight of wands too even though it's like the world is it's there the ten of pentacles is there the magician is also there and the fool so they are good um yeah I feel it's probably from this sl sl slowness this taking time to reflect which will bring about the rest of the energies excuse me before you start fresh so take your time next cycle I guess don't force anything just go with the flow so we've got the five of cups coming up in reverse so the five of cups represents loss regret emotional confusion feeling sad and grieving regrets over lost opportunities changing priorities resistance to change so it's come up reverse so that's telling me you're not experiencing loss so how our emotions will be moving us how how we will analyze and um alchemize our energies basically before showing up fresh we're not feeling lost we're not regretting anything um so this is what I mean even though we may not be taking certain action and maybe a bit slow movement because we are analyzing ourselves we're not in loss we're not there's no emotional confusion we know exactly because we've analyzed we're not feeling sad and grieving and it makes sense because we've got pentacles their magician and the world so even though there is this retrospect of just like hmm just analyzing yourself there's still fulfillment um change may come up because obviously it's transformative so we're not resisting change um and you're not changing your priorities neither so you're sticking to what you are about basically the eight of wands we've got news quick developments making intentions clear everything up in the air sorting out priorities resolving unfinished businesses so there may not be any new news coming in this cycle again because we've got the four of cups it's just about like you're not seeing them opportunities because you're just reflecting on what you need to do um so things aren't up in the the air i guess things won't be all up in the air there's there's no on on business uh, unfinished business that you're going to be dealing with not this cycle anyway and you may not get messages coming in next cycle it just may be just about alchemization and um, getting ready to enter into the scorpio transformative side okay so it's kind of like i'm seeing like the next cycle as we enter december maybe even more just like whoa potentially but we'll see because this transformative this drive and passion is activating closer to the end of the cycle okay so keep that in mind we then have we'll do the the pentacles we've got ten of pentacles and then nine at the top of the deck so ten of pentacles the good life conventional values tradition wealth seeking affluence enjoying abundance sticking to the tried and tested 
nine of pentacles got accomplishment self-reliance having a comfortable lifestyle enjoying the finer things in life being responsible in a sense of security financial or material resourcefulness and grace so that along with the magician maybe this retrospection of not needing in quick news um you know is bringing in this fulfillment we'll go to the major arcanas and then we'll come back to the present moments this video is already some long ass video so we've got 21 obviously the world is is the world isn't it so completion fulfillment freedom cosmic love freedom from fear feeling um at one with the universe re reward for hard work and effort celebration of self and others accomplishing goals traveling mentally and physically the world is my oyster so this just speaks to me just like um especially because my Lilith as I was talking about Lilith moving into Libra and my Lilith is in Sag so it's like about bringing in that balance of all of that stuff but the world is your oyster at this point so this is why I just feel you've got the ten of pentacles um yeah let's just finish magician anyway in initiative persuasion action um concentration focusing on a goal acting with awareness getting magical results wisdom is the key to success don't deceive yourself that you know all the answers so you do um you've got magic in your hands but sometimes we may need to compromise and of course the fool um impulse infatuation blind to the truth childlike pure and cor uncorrupt spontaneous adventurous eternal optimism ready for a quest so yeah it's kind of like what i'm generally seeing here anyway is we've got how our energy is ready to just upgrade us how our emotions are ready to move is ready to enter into this new full like state of just fresh it's just like oh okay you've got the magician there so this freshness of how these transformations start to act start to activate you've got the the magician powers to just get whatever you need done done you know things loose ends aren't up in the air with eight of wands you may not get any like new news and stuff or fast messages coming in however i'm just seeing general fulfillment even if things may go just a little bit slower because you're analyzing your situation your your energy um and then yeah like with that five of cups you're not in that negative energy i can't remember what the five of cups was i'm sorry my head my head is going just a little bit but that's kind of what i'm seeing there anyway i'm generally seeing fulfillment maybe a little bit slow um at first because most of the energies are picking up and of course because this starts on the monday um no the sunday it's kind of like this suppression around getting that balance maybe there but when the sun and school the sun and mars enter scorpio at the end of the cycle that's when things may pick up a little bit more but let's come back now to the present moment take a deep breath with me and exhale so present moment sorry magician i have to move you Ooh. let's just put them there the present moment we have the moon in such i remember just yesterday you can see yesterday mercury entered officious all right, happened just yesterday. Okay, so the way we are exchanging our energy from this point on um, is transformative in nature. Literally, it will transform and heal, whether that is 
you're exchanging your energy to help heal physically, mentally, or just perspective wise, like in your head, sharing your knowledge, your gnosis, and this it brings healing to people. We're exchanging our energy in this way now. Um, that's money as well. The crypto market is healing, it's changing, it's transforming. So check out my Crypto Angles podcast for Sunday. I've got a lot to talk about um, with the new AI pin. But, and do check out too, because, I, oh wow, I looked at Zalanthia. So, um, yes, now, what else was I going to say? The moon. The moon, our uh, emotions are moving us in this Sag energy, this new direction. All right, so pay attention to how your emotions move you at this point. And yeah, I will definitely catch you in the next video. Um, <laughs> Angel, out. Bye.